I'm here with Brian Burt in Los Angeles. Brian Burt needs no introduction. He's a barber and right now he's working in Los Angeles at Vinnie's Barbershop. I first caught up with Brian at the Barber Life Expo in Brighton with Paul Hewitt and a number of other celebrity barbers, including Brian himself. I'm here in my RV traveling across America and Brian is my first interviewee. So. Brian. Welcome. Welcome, Thank Larry. You. Welcome to America. Yeah. <laughs> Again, because we ran into each other last January, was it? Do you remember you were in the Mustang? That's right. Was uh, that January? Or no? No, last September I was, was it? in, yeah, in yeah. California. So good to see you again. And I gave you a surprise visit. Yeah. And I'm giving you another surprise visit <laughs> today. Yeah, yeah. So there yeah. we go. So it's nice, bright, early morning here in beautiful Los Angeles, California. Welcome. Thank you. So I just want to start again, obviously, by asking where you start, because as I understand it, you was like a skateboarding, weed smoking guy and ba pretty much uh, barbering. And I still do all the above. <laughs> <laughs> I still skateboard. I still smoke a little marijuana. It's legal here in America. Uh, uh, I'm still uh, cutting hair. Yeah, so I'm still barbering. Okay, so tell me about your actual route into barbering from skating. My actual roots with barbering through skateboarding. Uh, okay, well, skateboarding was, uh, like I've, I've said before, it was my way of being myself in the town I grew up in. I grew up around lots of jocks, and in America we call them uh, very athletic people and very redneck people. People, So I was always an outcast there, so I always was into skateboarding, and I could take the bus into the city and go see other people that were like me, trying to escape their little towns. And I found, um, uh, so fast forward, so that's how I got into skateboarding, and then I've just fell in love with it, skateboarded, you know, skateboarding since for a long time now, I'm old. And uh, uh, so then I, um, when I got into barbering, I was getting my hair cut every week, basically. I'd go in for just a lineup or a, a fade. I, I had hair back then. It was, uh, this is back in like 96 or something in Seattle. And uh, I was, uh, I had a really good income coming in. So I was able to do that, go get my hair cut every week. And uh, I remember asking the guy about it. And I, um, he said, you gotta go to school, blah, blah, blah. And I just never pulled the trigger on it. I never like followed through with it. And then cause it, I was making too much money doing what I was doing. So then I moved, fast forward, I moved to San Diego and uh, working part-time jobs and doing what I was doing. I was like, I really need to figure something out, a uh, steady income rather than um, uh, just make a bunch of money and then live off that money and, go make, and then make a bunch of money. So I needed a steady income. So I looked into the local barber college uh, and uh, I was getting, actually in, in Seattle, uh, sorry, in San Diego, I was still getting my hair cut weekly at a place called Milt's Barbershop. And uh, Milt said, why would you want to be a barber? And I was like, well, you, you, know, you get to be yourself here. You can do whatever you want. I loved going in there for, uh, I'd get a cutthroat, as you guys call them, uh, shaves every, every two weeks. I'd get a haircut every two weeks and then a haircut and a shave every two weeks. So I'd go there twice a month. And he goes, why would you want to be a barber? I was like, oh, because you're your own boss. And then in my head, because I used to hustle and do things, I knew it was a cash business. I could keep that money away from the IRS. <laughs> and so, because uh, milk was cash only. So I was like, there's no way of following where this money's coming from. So I should get into barbering and then I could still do what I was doing and make money uh, legally. So I got into, so anyway, um, I went down to the local barber school. They said, uh, back then, it's a much different time. Uh, it's just like almost 13 years ago. I was the only white guy there. It was all black, Hispanic, and Vietnamese um, at the school. There's one other white guy, Bob Barbera, rest in peace. He actually passed a few years ago. And uh, it was just the two of us. And uh, so I went in there and they said, um, I got ahead of myself, sorry. Uh, I went in there, filled out the paperwork, and they said it's like a six month waiting list. I was like, wow. They called me two days later and then said, hey, if you have the money, you can start tomorrow. And I, of course I had the cash. So I went down there and I come to find out they wanted to have a white guy there because there was no other white guys there. Uh, so I started the school and uh, uh, just loved it, you know, loved getting my hair cut. And um, luckily for me, I was uh, living in San Diego at the time and there's a huge community of tattooed barber, um, skateboarders, surfers that I was friends with. So they'd all come to the barber school and um, I'd cut their hair and give them face shaves. So I got practice really quick um, and that's, I really fell in love with it then. And um, that's about it on that part. Okay. so. You spoke about kind of a lot of corruption, so to speak, at the beginning of your career. Now you're at Vinnie's Barbershop, and by all accounts, it's a very structured, yeah. ordered environment. Tell me a little bit about Vinnie's Barbershop and how things are different and what he does differently and why you enjoy working there. 
Vinny's Barbershop is owned by uh, actually a guy I went to barber school with um, named Omar Romero. I met Omar right away in school. We hit it off. All the gangsters were saying, oh, you're going to love Omar because he's total 50s rock and roll. Um, rockabilly guy, tours the world, playing music. I was like, I can't wait. I actually, I can't wait to meet this guy because he was on tour when I started school. So then he came in and uh, he came walking in. We, we hit it off. And then fast forward. So um, now at Vinny's here, Omar runs his shop how I ran lefties. Uh, with lefties, we always wore slacks, dress shoes, smocks, ties on Saturdays. It's very structured because I know guys when they walk in the door, I learned from a real estate agent. He told me, you want to mirror the clients. You want to mirror your clients. You want to be a thug, you're going to get thugged. You know, you want to, you want to, if you want to make a lot of money, you dress a little nicer and people with money will come to you. So I did that. So now at Vinny's, I, I've been traveling around the last few years and uh, finally hit Omar. No one quits Omar's shop. He has a 12, 11 employees, uh, 10 barbers and two, port, or, I'm sorry, nine barbers and two porters. And uh, he, uh, no one leaves here. So he said, hey, there's a bar, uh, one of my guys is leaving. Do you want a chair? So I said, I said, of course. So for the first few months, I've been driving over an hour and a half in the morning to get here, to work here. And the reason being, because Omar runs his shop just even stricter than I did. And I was, if you ask any of my guys, they would say, oh, Brian was a dick to work for. But if you ask them now, they all get it because they all own shops now in San Diego. And they're like, they see why I had to do it because it's a lot of stress dealing with all this, all the shit of owning a shop. And uh, so Omar runs his shop very, very tight, clean. I mean, even I think I'm clean and I'm not. He'll tell me, hey, go shine your shoes. And I like being checked like that. A lot of the younger barbers, they get butt hurt or the fuck that guy. They don't understand. Like, you got to you gotta crawl before you walk, you know, learn the way. It's fun to get broken down and then in a year look back and say, like, oh, I remember that. So it's nice to be put check daily here at Omar's because he walks in and, hey, do this, do that. I'm like, oh, shit, my mirror is dirty. Or, my, you know, like the things I just, you slip, you know, you get comfortable. And I think I'm clean. So I love working for someone who cracks the whip, so to say, uh, comes in and, and does that. And a lot of guys are like, fuck that. I don't want to, well, don't do that. But if you want to make really good money and be have a full book of clientele, you, you'll deal with that stuff, you know. So that, that's one of the reasons I like working here. Okay, so when we last spoke, uh, both in Brighton and when I was here in September, you said that you kind of like the fact that you can use social media and um, move around and now you've actually changed that to work at Vinny. Why have you given up this? Um, okay, it's funny, I'm glad you asked that. Um, social media has changed, this is a big topic. It's like a daily thing in barbershops and, and I get asked that a lot because I get a lot of, I have a lot of followers but they're not active followers. People don't understand. Like my followers are from like I get interviews in Details Magazine or something. So people just want to see haircuts. They're not following Brian. They don't want to see what I'm doing. You know. So that's why I changed my format. Now I just delete things. Like I'll post something and I because I use my hair my haircuts. Like they're not fire as the kids will say or they're not you know the best haircuts. But for me it's reference because I daily I do about 10 to 15 guys a day, five days a week, and at least seven of those guys a day have no idea how they want their hair cut because I purposely don't like to cut the same people's hair all the time. So I don't open my book. I have a strategic way I open my book so I get to get new people. So I use my, my Instagram now as reference for how they, a lot of guys sit down and you barbers, if you're watching this, you know, they, I don't know. So you're like, all right, let's get this going. So my, mine is pictures of haircuts. So that's why I use mine now for that. I don't really like showing, sharing with people every fucking thing I'm doing every day. The, 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 I, I, a couple years ago I did, and to me like Instagram was kind of fun. It was new and it was neat. And then fast forward and like I like to keep um, what's the word? Uh, not growing. What's that? Business and pleasure separate. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing now. But I like to keep going. So now it's like mine's just that, and you'll get a peek into what I'm doing. Like today, I'll, I'll post a picture of this. I'll keep it up for a few hours, and I'll delete it because people don't want to see that. Like they don't want to see that. They want to see my haircuts. I, I get it. So I try to just keep it that way. So I don't have like here's me and Larry at the observatory. Here's me and Larry getting coffee. Here's me and Larry and Jill getting pizza. Like it's just too much, you know. Like and that that comes to the thing where I was saying too, people think they matter too much, you know. With with Instagram and Facebook, it's like people don't give a shit, you know. Like they did. I think a couple of years ago, we have this topic a lot. Like yeah. a couple of years ago, it was so much different. People were like excited, like oh, what, what's he doing today? What's he doing? And some guys have strategically kept that consistent. They're doing very well with it. You know, my tattoo friends does very well with it. He, four or five days he posts a day, you know, and people love it and, but he's, he's making money off of it. So it's like, it's like, to me, it's like, if you're not making money off of it, why keep letting people into your life, you know? 
So that's why I've changed mine. It's more, uh, mine's like, like I said, it's more for a reference and I'll give you a peek into what's going on. You know, or if I'm excited about something like, cause I'm, I'm, I'm a weirdo. I always have been a weirdo and I get excited about weird things. So like I might see a, a, some graffiti on the wall and, and people don't realize like, I know that kid had to fucking climb fences and barbed wire chain link fence to get that piece up there. And I like that, you know, so some people get it. So those are the ones that follow me, but I don't, I don't I used to post a lot of that kind of stuff, and uh, now I just just do the haircuts a little bit, and just a little peek here and there. Okay, and I guess where you're not doing the education, there's not that constant need, because you know this, uh, yeah. Instagram cannot build a barber shop, uh, but it can bring you uh, build you an international Absolutely. following where you can go and then do your education gigs. Yeah. But it seems like your feet are on solid ground now, and you. Yeah, I'm. Uh, the, the, I was just I just canceled a trip to Vegas I was you know, paid to go paid well to go out there for two days and I don't really like Las Vegas <laughs> I don't, you know it's like I, I and as I, I told the guy I, I was flattered I was all excited to go out there and then um, I thought about it and I was like do I really want to go out there and, and do this because it's just it's um, if when you come back home you're just the, the normal barber you know in your neighbor your town so it's like these guys, and I mean, it's nothing bad against it or anything, but they, I know, because I, I have a lot of friends that work in music, and I know that you're this guy when you're out there, and when you come home, you're just that normal guy again. So it's like, why keep doing it? I mean, I'm, I mean, if I was in my 20s, I'd be all in. I'd be, you know, like 100, just going, going, going. But I'm in my mid-40s now, so it's time to, you know, build my clientele here, put some money away. I'll do some things here and there if it's if it sounds, you know, fun and, like, sexy, you know, like, so, like, I, um, uh, Vic and Ryan keep inviting me up, not keep, but they've invited me a few times up to uh, Newcastle, I think they're in, in North, North of England. Yeah, Newcastle, yeah. And I really want to do that because that sounds, that sounds fun to me. Like, I don't, I don't want to fly out to London and, you know, I pay for my own hotel room and then, and then set up all my tools and cut hair all day not to get to talk to everybody and then pack it all up and then go home. That, that doesn't sound fun to me. Like, I'd rather go travel, maybe... You know, but Paul asked the last time for the barley, he coming out. I was like, I don't want to, I'll come hang out, but I don't want to cut hair because when you're cutting hair, you're giving I, me, I give my 100% to my client, not my, not, so I want to hang out and party. I'm there to hang out, you know, so I only like to do the education thing. If it's like that, last year too, I went out to Florida. These guys, the scissor company, was like, oh, we're going to fly out, you're going to do all this stuff. So I was like, all right, cool, I'll go. Shitty flights, shitty hotel rooms, uh, shitty rental car it was just like you know it's just like it's not worth it when i could just be happy cutting hair right here and making probably twice as much money you know so it's like do you want a, the fame or do you want to just you know the money i'd rather just have the money got it got what's it. the rapper tupac say like, fuck the fame you know like i want i want the money <laughs> oh, that's fair enough i'm not you know i mean i'm not i'm not like money doesn't rule my i'm just saying i'd rather stay here and just live a, a comfortably rather than go 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 and it's like because i've done these festivals it's like oh it sounds fun but you're like dude you fly out there you're cutting here in the sun and under a pop-up what are you really getting out of it it's, you know like t 10 pictures for your instagram like so your followers can see you you flew to wherever you know <laughs> like one of the guys i work with here he's a lot of the guys i work with here at vinnie's are um, big in the rock and rock and roll crowd the 50s rock and roll scene and Luis just flew to um, Switzerland. He's flying, literally flying out there to do a show and flying home to Switzerland. And, and we talk about it. He'd rather stay right here and just cut hair. You know, he's not going to make a million dollars, you know, but it helps him with his record sales. And, that, and so he has to do it. And so with barbering, like, I would just rather stay here, go do a couple things. And uh, like I said, I'm pr tra trying to plan a trip out to the north of England this time. With and Vicky I, and Brian. Yeah, S and then SBB also, um, what's, his, what's his name? He owns Hard Grind. Um, Colin. Colin. But what's his business part? I met him in Paris. Um, he has the um, uh, abandoned ship. Richie. Rich, yeah, he's yeah. cool. He's invited me a few times too. And he's in the north. So I think this time I want to go there, not cut hair, just maybe teach a class or something. You know, So it's just two hours, not like clock in for an eight hour day cutting hair. Like, you know, Cause I, I'd rather just do that at home. Okay, okay. No, I'm with you, that's cool. So talking about partying as we were before and your t-shirt, you've got the Eagle Pig. As I understand it, you and Dane yeah. do a barber life here in America. Tell yeah. me a little bit about that event. So last year I threw, um, I, uh, it was called This Barber Life. I was trying to think of a name and uh, to me, when I say This Barber Life, that's, that's my, This Barber Life, what I live. 
And a lot of guys don't live the way I live. I, I travel a lot with, not just barbering, but just I like to do things and explore and, and travel. And I'm a foodie, I love to eat good food. And so my barber life, this is, I was showing people like, to me, I'm attracted to the, the barbers that like are into skateboarding or into graffiti or into surfing or in the things I'm into, like-minded barbers. So um, I invited Shane Nesbitt, Fabian, I don't know Fabian's last name, um, but Fabian the barber, he's out of Portland, Oregon from Miami originally. Barber Justin from Chicago and Paul and Jay from England came out and we uh, we hit three sound. We hit San Diego, um, Orange County, Dane's shop, Eagle and Pig, and then we hit Vinny's here. And we had three parties, three nights, and we filmed it, had a blast. And so I had a great time. And then um, it was a lot. I didn't realize how much goes into like packing everybody in the van and driving them around and getting them back to the, the room because I rented a house for us all to stay in. And it was an amazing time, but I was like, exhausted after that four days because <laughs> I wanted a party. I didn't want to be the, the, the captain of the ship, you know, and I had to be the captain. I didn't realize that. So this year we're doing it again, but we're doing one night and it's going to be at Dane's shop in Costa Mesa at Eagle and Pig Barber. And it's going to be one night and this one's going to be really big. Uh, Dane's last year we had at least 300 people there, and the, which is a lot of people. And uh, um, I'd say at least ha half or at least 200 of them were Cosmos or Barbers. So it was really neat to meet Barbers from all over the place. We had guys flying in from Phoenix, um, Northern California, so it was neat. So this year we're doing One Night of Danes, July 31st. It's a Sunday, because traditionally in America, Barbers and Cosmetologies are off Sundays and Mondays. So Sunday we can party, sleep in Monday, and then be, you know, our people can travel in and come in. So July 31st at Danes, we're gonna have skateboarding, we're gonna have uh, ramps and curbs, lots and lots of booze and beer. Um, no live music, live music to me is loud, and I just want DJs, good music, so people can talk and hang out. Um, there's gonna be a lot of cameras there, so it's, it's, gonna, be, it's gonna be cool to, uh, to, to document people meeting for the first time, you know, because we meet, like you and I, I knew who you were before I met you, you know, like, you, and that's how it is in the, in the barber and hair world. And actually surf world, skateboard too, too. You see, I see young skaters meet up and they're like, oh, I follow you on Instagram. They, so it's, it's really neat bonding. So it's, it's gonna be cool to document all that again this year. And this year the barbers will be Hamlet. He's out of Miami. Now he's living here in the cut 305 is his Instagram name. Barbara Fabian's coming again. Justin's coming again from Chicago and then Dane and then myself will be there. And we might do a, a couple haircuts here and there, you know, but it's not gonna be a, it's not gonna be like you, uh, it's not gonna be like a, a pop-up barber shop at all. It's just gonna be a, a pop-up party. Okay. <laughs> and there's okay. gonna be some hair cutting going on, some skateboarding going on, music, lots of drinking and a good time. So Brian, um, tell me something. Do you think that there's a lot of young guys out there using platforms such as Facebook and Instagram to throw punches way above their weight with their limited skill set. I'm asking you this as a barber with 13 years experience, a barber who's owned two barber shops and you know just a lot of experience within the barbering industry. Absolutely. Um, I'm glad you asked this Larry. Um, these are just my opinions so don't anybody get frustrated or mad at me but this is what, how I feel. Yes, I feel that there's a lot of barbers out there throwing weight or punches above their weight. Uh, a lot of barber, a lot of guys are going to school. I don't know. Uh, just the other day, I met a guy in his in my age, probably. I don't know if these guys realize like, we make it sound fun. You take pictures and you do you do your thing, but we stand. I mean, it's just it's not as sexy as we we make it sound or look on 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 social media. Um, I see guys, kids, I call them kids, but they're not, but young, young barbers have been cutting hair in less than five years, even five years. Those are the guys who I kind of always are mad at me when I work in shops and they've been cutting hair five or six years ago, this fucking, here comes Brian Burt. And I'm like, dude, like all I, if you work with me, all I do is cut hair. Like I take a couple pictures here and there. I'm okay. I try to stress that a lot in my classes. Like I'm not the best. I don't want to be the best. Those guys stay over there in the best circle. I'm, I, I'm good enough. And that's that. And if kids can humble themselves to learn that, just being good enough can make you more money than being the best. And that that doesn't make sense to people who don't get it. But if you get it, I'm speaking to you. Like so, these young barber, newer barbers are coming into the game, and they get like, fuck this guy. I'm better than him. I'm better than him. Like who? No one gives a shit. You know, it's not, no one cares. It's between you and the customer. Do not worry about the other barbers in your shop or anything. It's between you and the customer. Give your customer that undivided attention. I go into shops and I watch these kids and they're just throwing their neck strips on the floor, dropping combs and no one's sanitizing things cleanly. It's not, I talked about earlier working for Jim and Milt, like that just wouldn't happen back in the day. And, it, and in barbering, it's, it's losing its, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, what would that be? Like 
The, um, honesty. Honesty, yeah. Just uh, we need to bring back that standard, uh, like like Omar has, and that's why we're fucking all ten barbers are booked solid every day a week, and we don't throw it out there on Instagram. No one's saying we're booked. You know, you see young barbers taking pictures of their full books, like. No one gives a fuck. Like, just cut hair, have a great time, make good money, travel, love, and spread love, and, and that's it. Teach other barbers. Like, quit to make it a competition where there's no competition. Competition's with yourself. Like, it shouldn't be who takes the best picture of a fucking skin fade. Like, skin fades, like, they come and go. Like, you know, you're not going to be a... Unless you're in the hood, I understand. Working in the hood, that's all you do, and it's, that's what it is. But in the, in the other side, like... Haircuts come and go. It's I've I've been in it 13 years almost. I've seen trends change a few times. So it's uh, so I do see I see that a lot and it's it's sad because uh, I'll meet a young guy and he's cool and stuff. But then I'll, I'll click oh cool let's let me go check his name. Why don't you follow me? I get that too. Why don't you follow? <laughs> I don't <laughs> if I don't know you like on a personal level. Why do I want to follow you if all you're posting pictures of haircuts? Like it's like I why would I, it's like um, I relate to skateboarding. You know like if all the kids are doing 360 flips, I'm gonna follow the guy I know. Who does a clean 360 flip and it's no big deal to me i don't need to be like oh i need to follow everybody who's doing the same fucking haircut um a lot of people have said it and, and famous people said it like don't be better be different if you i mean if you want the followers or you want to travel and stuff stand out in the crowd don't don't just you know like now the big thing is everybody's skateboarders and cholos like everybody people don't even fucking skateboard are wearing thrasher t-shirts and uh, and skateboard independent you know, vans and stuff. And I get it. I mean, but they're, they're trying to come off. Stay in your own lane. Do your own thing. And it'll come to you. And if it doesn't come to you, it wasn't meant to be. You know, like, uh, fortunate for me, things just happen for me. I don't ever set out, like, oh, I'm going to go work at Vinny's so I can cut a bunch of celebrities' hair and musicians, rock stars' hair. It happens. You know, it just happens. I didn't I didn't hit, you know, like, Larry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this so Larry will come interview me. It just happens. And, that, and in, that, in life, if that stuff happens... It's just so much easier and better and you feel better about it rather than like, you know, like gunning for things all the time. Just sit back. Like barbering is such a, it's just, it's, another, it's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's going to be here way after all this, the, this that's going on. And it's fun what's going on right now, but it's, it's, not, it's, it's been the same. It's going to be the same. So just have fun with it while you're in it. Because these guys, Instagram, I can't wait. I thought about it when someone just hits the switch, it's gone. You know, like, or even Facebook, like, doom. What's everybody doing now? Like, so if you didn't make your mark and you weren't humble enough to like talk to people at parties, I go to people at these barber battles. I'm not even into barber battles. I've been to like two, and I sit in the corner and drink beer because I don't know how to like relate to these people that are like they're so into this uh, competition shit. And I'm just like, fuck, dude. I just cut hair. I've done I've done pretty good with it, and I, I'm here. You know, like I I first person. Like, what's up? I'm Brian, and they're, they're like, oh, you're Brian Brewer. I'm like, yeah, dude. What's up? Let's go get a beer. Like I don't I'm not that guy. You know. And, a lot of barbers are putting themselves, actually, they put themselves on the pedestal. No one's putting them up there. They're doing it because they think, because they got followers, that they're this fucking, this guy. And it's like, dude, you cut hair, you know? Like, it's not that big of a deal. So tomorrow it's just like musicians. Like, I meet guys that are really big musicians, and I would never know it. And then I, after they, you know, I start picking their brain a little bit. I don't, I don't, I don't like, bug them too much because I know they're coming to just get a haircut. Or even athletes. I just cut big athletes' hair, and they don't, they don't put themselves up there. They let the people do it, you know? But so with social media, it's really sad to see guys my age even doing it. It's like, dude, don't you have kids? Like, fucking go home. Like, stay home. Like, it's, it's, you cut hair. You know, I don't, I don't get it, you know? So unless it's making you a lot of money, then I guess go, go get it. But um, so that's why I think, yeah, it's a lot of people are using the social media thing to put, make themselves bigger than they are. And like you said, young, newer barbers are just gunning for these guys who've been doing a long time. And most of the older guys, like, we really don't give a shit. You know, it's just like, it's cool, post a picture, blah, blah, blah. There it is. If you like it, you don't. Like the other day I posted a picture and it's funny because I did it for reference. Because no one knows what a three and three fourths looks like on the side, that's a half an inch. And uh, no one's liking it. And I'm, it was like, oh, that picture didn't get like, I, I don't care, I'm doing it for my client in the chair so I can show them what that guard looks like, you know, so they can know what size is. So it's just funny uh, to see what's going on with that. Okay. So, All right. Just to change the subject yeah. just slightly, uh -huh. you're doing uh, some work at the moment with a company called Tip Top. Yeah, Tip Top Industries. Uh, it's owned by Dre Perales. They own two barber shops in um, um, Southern California, a tattoo shop, a pomade, and now he's got a sunglass coming out. He's got a watch coming out um, through other companies. 
that he's collaborating with them, and he's just doing the doing it the right way. Like I said, Dre probably doesn't have an Instagram. I don't think he does. Like he, he he's just yeah, but he's doing very well. He doesn't need to put it out there. Um, so it's really cool to be aligned with him. Uh, he's uh, he's gonna help me take my this barber life um, parties across America, hopefully across the world, um, because. Um, I know the, the response we get from my parties and then after the parties, everybody hits me up, direct messages, when are you coming to my town? So Dre, I'm aligning myself. I used to be with a different company, um, but they just, they're kind of going a different angle, uh, direction, which I'm, it's, it's all good. I mean, do your thing. But Dre really gets my, my vision, so it's really neat to be lined up with them. Just do a lot of really cool stuff, new drapes, uh, just doing really cool things for barbering. You know, he's not just trying to be a suck, you know, he's trying to help barbering as well, not just trying to get in, make some money, get out. He'll be around for a long time. He's been in the industry uh, being a tattoo artist, so he saw that happen with his tattoo industry when the TV came and all that shit happened in tattooing. Everybody became a tattoo artist. Now it's kind of happening with barbering. It's kind of slowing down with barbering in America. But like two years ago, fucking barbering was just like, everybody's a barber you know but I mean when I, I, I'm so out of the scene but when I do go to like my whenever I'm in San Diego I try to go to the barber school I went to and I walk in and it's all white guys and I'm like wow this is different now because when I was here it was it was all Mexican Asian and uh, black dudes so uh, it's it's cool to see it, ch it change but um, I know Dre's um, he's in it for the right reasons and and for that reason he's doing well with it okay perfect Brian thank you for giving me the time uh, for this interview thank you for sharing your opinion on barbering right now thank you i'm sure a lot of my viewers and your viewers are going to find this uh, interview valuable in getting to know where you are right now so I and i want to thank you for including me in this because like i said i, I um, i'm humbled flattered that i'm involved and i thank you and hopefully i can uh inspire and teach someone out there that's thinking about picking up some scissors and a straight razor and making a living out of it